Welcome to the lecture on Columbic Attraction. So in today's activity, um, we saw that Columbic Attraction is the attraction of oppositely charged particles to each other. So uh, this works um, for many different particles in nature, but specifically we look at um, applying this idea with protons and electrons inside the atom. So basically we are um, looking at and discovering what forces are holding the atom together. <clears throat> and one of those forces is what we call a columbic attraction, where the positive force of the proton, um, or the positive charge of the proton and the negative charge of the electron are attracting each other and um, you know, pulling towards each other with a force um, that's going to keep that atom together. So hopefully you realize today in uh, the activity that we did on columbic attraction that two factors um, are, are going to kind of drive this columbic attraction. The first factor is the distance between the charged particles, the distance between the protons in the nucleus and the electrons um, on the outside. And in particular, we take a look at um, the, the electrons that are farthest out from the nucleus because those are going to be um, either, you know, held tightly or held uh, not so tightly depending on the distance. So the farther away they are, the weaker the attractive force. And we saw that in um, the <clears throat> uh, pictures today from the lab. So this is uh, taken, or the activity. This is taken directly from the activity. Um, here we can see that the farther out the electrons are, right, the weaker the um, attractive force. Okay, so the uh, the smaller sized arrow is meaning that it's a weaker force. And the closer they are, so you know, if we take a look at lithium up here, um, that distance between the protons in the nucleus and the electron on the outside isn't very um, far. And so we can see that the, uh, the arrow is very thick, meaning it's a strong attractive force. So the distance between the protons and the electrons are going to um, help drive the attraction between the two and and help kind of you know help us see uh, how certain uh, atoms are going to be you know either hold their electrons uh, more tightly or uh, those electrons will be able to be lost so we're going to see how this a columbic attraction is going to drive um, most of the periodic table trends that we discovered in breaking the code now, the second factor that the columbic attraction depends on is the number of uh, protons in the nucleus, um, or the magnitude of the charge. The more charge, the stronger the attractive force. So we saw again um, <clears throat> in the activity today that if you had just one proton, right, uh, we had a force of you know 2.3 times 10 to the negative 8 uh, newtons. However, if we had four protons, we saw that the force um, went up you know, quite a bit. So the more magnitude or the more particles you have um, inside your nucleus, then the stronger the attractive force can be. Um, all right, so um, what we can do is we can put this in mathematical relationships, the two um, factors that the columbic attraction depends on. Um, so we saw that the first factor was the distance, and we saw that the farther you are, you, <coughs> excuse me, the further you are away, the greater the distance, the less the force. So what that means is that the force of attraction is inversely proportional to the distance between the particles, and it's an it's a um, inverse square. So the distance squared. So we can say that uh, the force F, okay, the force of attraction, is proportional, right, that's our little proportional sign in math, to the inverse, or 1 over d squared, okay? So, um, you know, if we even just think about, um, you know, what this means is as we uh, increase d, right, as we make d bigger on the bottom, that means f is going to get smaller. Um, but if we uh, have a very, very small d, okay, on the bottom, then F is going to get bigger. The force is going to get bigger, just like we saw in the activity today. And then lastly, um, with the you know magnitude of charge or how many protons 
are in uh, the, the nucleus of the atom, we said that they are directly proportional, right? So the more, more protons, the more force, the less protons, the less force. So they're directly proportional. So that's why we have F is proportional not to one over Z, but just one, or, but just Z. And Z is atomic number or the number of protons. Okay, sometimes we symbolize that as a Z in the atom. All right, so we can um, take a look at this mathematically. In fact, um, <clears throat> as you dig deeper, deeper into chemistry, you can actually um, quantify or measure, okay, the, the force um, of attraction between protons and electrons. In fact, we're going to see um, and play with those numbers in the future. Um, but this is how, you know, they've figured it out. So basically, you know, Columbic attraction is what keeps uh, the atoms together. Um, it's the force of attraction between the positive protons in the nucleus and the negative electrons that are um, kind of orbiting the nucleus in a sense. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's what keeps it together. And, you know, the farther the electrons get away from the nucleus, okay, um, the weaker the attraction, right? So kind of, in essence, the, the more unstable um, or the more, you know, energy it has because it's unstable. And then the closer those electrons are to the nucleus, the stronger the attraction. And, um, you know, the more stable an atom will, will feel with its electrons. All right, so like I said, we're going to take a look um, and, and see how this Columbic attraction is going to drive every other um, uh, periodic table trend from the size of the atom to what we call um, electronegativity and ionization energy. Everything is going to be based on this columbic attraction of atoms.